Good morning, nice day today here again in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have this awesome 2021 GLC 300 for you today. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons and take it on a drive to let all you guys know how it is. Follow us along. All right, welcome back. We have a 2021 GLC 300. This thing is one of Mercedes bread and butter. This is in the compact SUV segment. And this thing is top notch. Let's discuss what I like, what I don't like. We'll go through uh, basically the entire car front to back. Let's begin. All right, to start off, we're gonna talk about the exterior. The exterior is just classic Mercedes. It has the AMG black package on there, the night package. It has black trim, the wheels are uh, diamond cut 20 inch wheels. It's got the classic large Mercedes grill. I'm not the biggest fan of where all these grills are headed. It looks good on this car. This does not have the illuminated star on here. It's just the classic standard grill. I think it looks very clean, great. The LEDs look great um, on, on the front. The back lights look nice and clean. Overall, I think Mercedes did a great job with this GLC. Now, keep in mind for the 2023 model year, they are doing a full redesign of this car. So it's gonna be an update. This is the last version of this GLC that they had going for a, quite a few years. Now, on the exterior, as you notice, one of my least favorite aspects of this car is the option of these running boards. I think not only are they completely unnecessary on this car, they absolutely get in the way. Uh, if you try to step in or step out of this car, you're gonna be bumping your legs nonstop against these running boards. So please, please, please do yourself a favor and take a look and make sure you don't have these running boards on this car or else you'll be in a lot of shin pain stepping in and out of this vehicle nonstop. Moving on to the interior, where do we start? There's a lot to talk about. Number one, it's the fact that Mercedes still kept their old outdated interior in here. I was very, very surprised to see the standard analog gauges in a car this modern. Even the GLB we drove previously, the 2020 GLB had a fully uh, uh, electronic gauge cluster laid out in here. So I was just very surprised to see these analog gauges as a car enthusiast. I actually like them, I prefer them. It's, uh, it, it looks nice and clean. There's not extra screens blaring in your face. I prefer the analog gauges, but it was, it was just kind of weird to find these in, in, a, in a modern car. The infotainment screen here looks good as well. It is a touch screen. There's, um, there's quite a large number of settings you can, you can play around with. I haven't really messed around with this too much. It is a touch screen. Um, it, it, it looks good, it's vibrant. Again, this screen is not as nice as some of the newer other Mercedes products. Um, but it gets the job done and you can control it by your hand or there is actually a touchpad right here, uh, in, uh, right where your hand lays that you can control that screen with as well. The only con of this touchpad is I don't like the fact that when you rest your hand, your hand goes directly on that touchpad. So it's something to keep in mind and uh, you can definitely uh, alter some of the settings and the screens if your hand is kind of laying here and uh, you're just you know twiddling, twiddling your thumbs per se. Moving on to the rest of the interior. The fit and finish all looks pretty great. All the materials feel nice and premium. It's got this, uh, this wood looking panel, the aluminum trim, it looks good. Um, very classy, clean, and modern. The seats are, uh, they're, they, they look great. They're fairly supportive. I have no issues with these seats. They're a heck of a lot better than some of the other SUVs I've driven, particularly the X3 we've recently driven, which was hard as rocks. This one is supportive in all the right places. It feels good. It's not as stiff. This is the MB Tex. This isn't 
the real Mercedes leather. If you want leather, you're going to have to uh, shell up a couple extra bucks for this car. Um, overall, this feels good. Um, doesn't feel overly cheap or anything like that. And uh, they, they hold up just fine over the years. Other things of note, uh, the seat controls are on the door as always with uh, majority of Mercedes products. You got the lumbar support on the seat itself. I don't mind it, it takes some, some getting used to. I think overall it's fine. It's got memory settings on, uh, on the driver's side, not on the passenger side. This particular model has heated seats on here. It does not have uh, cooled seats, which you would think a car in this bracket would have something like that. Um, you know, it has all the seat controls you need and you can get fairly comfortable in this car. All right, moving on. Uh, some of these controls, you got the shifter stock right here. Um, I prefer it to be in the center console here. This is fine. Uh, my one other complaint is this turn signal. It's, uh, it's a little bit on, on just kind of a flimsier side. It's flimsy. This action isn't all that great. It's, it's more typical of maybe a Japanese car rather than um, uh, a German car, German car in this price range. They do still have physical buttons for the AC controls in here, which I really, really enjoy. A lot of these modern cars start incorporating all that into this center dash, and you got to play around with it quite a bit to find how to how to cool down the car even so here you have uh, access these buttons feel nice they're uh they're aluminum very sturdy all the touch points in this car feel great uh some of the plastics here like such as this right here might feel a little bit cheaper if you're pressing on it overall it's it's great one of my favorite parts about the interior is definitely this steering wheel it has this nice sporty thick feel to it this is one of the few cars in this segment that actually gives you a slight uh, flat bottom right here. It looks good, it gives you more of a sportier feel to this car. I, I think in this segment, this is my favorite steering wheel. The shift paddles feel nice, um, nice and solid to the touch as well. Really, really no complaints with, uh, with any of this uh, layout or, or this entire interior setup. All right, moving on. This back seat uh, has quite a bit of room in here, especially the headroom. Uh, you do sacrifice quite a bit of knee room in this particular back seat. They gave slightly more room in the trunk. And again, this is not the longest car in this segment. If you're looking for the longest one, that would be the X3 in this uh, compact luxury SUV segment. I think taller adults will be fine in the headspace. It just depends who's sitting up front to see how much uh, new room you're gonna have back there. Okay, moving on. Uh, the headliner in here, I like the fact that also Mercedes put black headliner with this interior. My chief complaint is this mesh uh, panoramic roof that they have. It is partially see-through. So if you're in a hot, sunny climate, it's something to be aware of. What we're driving out now, it doesn't seem too bad, but I do prefer um, some of the other cars include a solid roof liner in here that doesn't let any of the sun through. Outside of that, uh, it, it's, it looks totally great. Moving on to the way this car drives. So this car comes with a 2.0 liter four-cylinder engine. This is a turbo engine. It has a nine-speed automatic transmission in here. The car's got 255 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. Uh, the power delivery is fairly smooth in here. Uh, I have no issues. It picks up and goes at almost any speed. It doesn't feel like boy racer from any point of the drive, not from a light not 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 from a get-go but it's never lacked for power at anything i did whether whether you're passing or or accelerating from a light so power delivery is great in here it doesn't shift as snappy or smooth as some of the other transmissions particularly the dual clutch one found in the q5 so majority of the other competitors still come with the traditional automatic and it does a great job delivering the power very, very smooth. It has a lazy throttle in here. So never does it feel jerky or cumbersome in its acceleration of driving the car. Now for the brake, the brake is uh, almost untypically like of German cars. It is very mushy in its delivery. You almost really got to dig in there for the car to start applying the brakes. Most German cars as of late or the recent ones I've driven has a very, very touchy brake. Again, this being a Mercedes product, I, I imagine they try to 
tone down all the uh, inputs, including the gas pedal and the brake to make the driving as smooth as possible. Now, overall, how's the driving here? I think this car drives phenomenally well. It's not floaty like you would think maybe a Mercedes product would be. It sits well on the road. It's smooth. Not many bumps upset it. Um, this car does come on 20 inch wheels and I don't mind it at all. It still feels and drives like a Mercedes product. It's not bumpy, jaggedy um, in, in, in any way whatsoever. I think overall the drive is is great what you would expect from a Mercedes product and they execute the luxury portion of this segment fairly well. Again, for me, it would be a toss up between this car and a Q5, the Audi Q5, which one delivers a smoother driving experience. The Q5 rides exceedingly well as well, but I cannot fault this Mercedes for being top of their game in the luxury segment for delivering you that, that feeling. All right, a couple other tidbits to mention. The visibility in this car overall is great. I feel like this windshield is slightly on the smaller side. The side windows are great. All right, the last point I wanna mention regarding the ride and the hushness of this car. Again, everybody expects Mercedes to have the quietest ride. Does this deliver? It does. Uh, mostly, I have no issue standing at a light. You can hear a little bit of traffic work nothing that's louder than any of these competitors. This is probably the quietest ride out of all the other luxury compact SUVs. Um, the car rides buttery smooth, even on these 20 inch wheels. There's close to zero noise coming from these tires or this setup into the cabin. So if you are looking for the quietest ride, this is probably the car to get. All right, this car starts at $45,000, this is the all-wheel drive model. I don't believe there's a rear-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive version of this, so that's awesome. They start with the all-wheel drive. This starts at 45 k you throw in a couple options, and we're almost at $55,000. Uh, very competitive in this segment. Many other cars start touching the 60 k uh, price point, especially uh, for 2022, 2023 models. This still keeps the price reasonably um, uh, reasonably affordable if you're looking for a car in this class. All right, we're gonna move into the likes and dislikes. Let's start off with the dislikes this time. All right, on the exterior, I severely dislike the running boards for the reasons mentioned before. And the other one is the fake exhaust tips in the back of the car. Uh, Mercedes should have just cut them out, period. I don't know why they had to do these fake exhaust tips with the slight in then in there. Anyways, that's number one. Number two, this steering. This steering, um, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but it's just this, this awkward, heavy, lazy steering in here that is, that is somewhat still sensitive to input. You know, you can see that right here. It responds quick, but yet it's heavy-ish. So I don't feel like this steering matches the rest of the car particularly well. And the last dislike is this touch pad right underneath your hand in, in the middle of this center console. It, it, it does what it's supposed to do. I just don't like when you rest your elbow and hand on here, uh, you, you start affecting the screen in a couple places. All right, moving on to the likes. I definitely enjoy the way this car looks with the AMG night package, uh, the black accents on here, the 20 inch wheels. I think this car looks great. Now, number my number two like, I really like the steering wheel and the analog gauges. I think it gives it this like cool, retro, uh, classic Mercedes vibe. This steering wheel puts the car, elevates it to give it a slightly more modern, sportier feel. I definitely like the steering wheel. And number three like, this is probably the best one of all, is not only how the car, how well the car is insulated, but just how smooth this is. This car really does live up to the Mercedes vibe and what people are looking to feel out of this kind of product. I can drive this, it feels like for hours and hours on end. Uh, I'm not getting tired, there's nothing jaggedy about this ride. It really is a pleasant place to be for anything from minutes to hours at a time. Kudos to Mercedes for incorporating their classic feel into a car like this. Okay, overall conclusions. This is a nice, 
luxury compact SUV. I don't think you can go too wrong buying this. I, I honestly, I enjoy driving this in the time I've spent in this car. It's not uh, giving me or eliciting a whole ton of emotions out of driving this, but I think that's precisely the point. It's a nice, relaxing drive that doesn't irk or bother you from anything you do in this car. Not the acceleration, not the brakes, not the outside sound. Uh, it just, it feels good all around and, and it leaves you uh, refreshed at the end of the day after you're done driving this. Guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a drive with us in this GLC 300. As usual, definitely give us the likes, subscribe. We'll make sure to bring you tons of awesome more content. Until next time on the desert road.